Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. Holy name Jesus, we magnify your name, O God. Yes, we adore your holy name in this room this afternoon. Yes, Jesus, blessed be your name. Blessed be your precious name. Blessed be your glorious name. You are mighty, O God, to save. You are my redeemer, my savior. Yes, Lord Jesus, in you we receive redemption and salvation. We give you praise and glory this afternoon. Thank you for the Holy Spirit you sent for us to teach teach us all things hallelujah we bless you we thank you jesus saradakando zadia rapakato roboko shekete beke anamazai rikanda rabasante rebeke zagado shadia oh jesus we lift your name in this place we glorify your name in this place may you be glorified in our singing may you be glorified in our worship this afternoon may you be seen in our works in the name of jesus rekata rabakante rebeke zagado Yes, Lord Jesus, we are here to worship you and worship you alone. For you are glorious in holiness. For you are glorious. You are excellent. Oh, Jesus, great are you, Lord. Great is your name. Holy is your name. You are Messiah, Emmanuel. Yes, we lift your name and we glorify your holy name. Jesus, we bless your name. Jesus, we worship your name. You are Yeshua, Mashiach. We honor you, Jesus this afternoon thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you are great Lord you are great Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 when Jesus saw the multitude he began to speak to them hallelujah Jesus is always ready to speak to us when we come to him when we gather to him he's always ready to speak to us amen can, we, can you give us Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1? If it is possible, amen. It says that blessed are the poor in heart. Amen. Because, of the, because the kingdom of God is theirs. Blessed are those who hunger and thirsty for righteousness because they shall be filled. Amen. That's what Jesus does when we gather to him. Amen. He fills us. Amen. He fills our heart. He feeds our spirit. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands to him and acknowledge him? This is what we have come to do this afternoon. Just to acknowledge Jesus, to glorify him, to thank him. Lift up your voice to him. Even those who are watching, wherever you are watching from, acknowledge Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so compassionate. He's so compassionate. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Come on, 
jina la Yesu taja jina la Yesu 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 jina la koni la ku aminiwa Kuheshimiwa Kuheshimiwa Say Yesu Yesu Jina lako Nila kuabudiwa Kuabudiwa
come on, help him. We have you. We have to him and worship him worship him worship him worship him worship him worship Jesus father we worship you this afternoon you are worthy you are worthy of our worship you are worthy of our worship Jesus we have your name in this place we have your name this afternoon for there is no one like you Jesus for there is no one who can be compared with you we have you king of glory we have you in center of days. Come on, lift up your worship to him. Raise your worship to him. Jesus, we heard your name. We hear you, Jesus. We hear you, Jesus. We hear you, Master. We hear you, Jesus. We hear you, Jesus. You are the King of Kings. You are the King in Zion. Yes, we hear your holy name. We hear you, Jesus. Yes, you hear you, Lord. You are Alpha. You are Omega. We hear you, Jesus. We hear you, Lord. We hear you, Lord. Yes, we hear you, Lord. We hear you, Lord. Come on, raise the sound of worship in this room. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus, we hear you. Yes, we hear you. We hear you, Jesus. We worship you. We hear you, Most High. We hear you. We worship you. is what we have come to do this afternoon just to hear him to worship him to adore him because we know who he is he's holy he's mighty there is no one like him lift your worship raise your worship to him yes Jesus yes Jesus we hear you we hear you you are you are God
worshiping him. He is our God. Yes, he is our God. You are our God and we worship you. You are God and we worship you. Sakata Palakatira Mashia Bataya. Zikete Dashia Bataya Razarola. You are God, Jesus. And we worship you. Yes. Tokara Sara Parida Matia Rabada. You are my God and I worship you. Oh, Jesus, you are God. And we worship you, Savior. Yes, you are my God. Yes. You are God. Yes. And we worship you. You are God. Oh. And we worship you. never change. You are God. You are who you are today and forever. And we worship Hallelujah. Come on, do it for Jesus. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. You're welcome this afternoon. We believe you're good. You may be seated. Thank you very much. We're glad this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are able to go online and share the page for this lunch on your social media platforms, that will be great uh, so that we can extend it both on YouTube and on Facebook, whether Elevate TV or Life Church International or even Foster David Juma page. It's always good to let your colleagues and your friends also enjoy the same word. Praise God. I said praise God. We are still dealing with the believer and the anointing and different aspects. And I'm glad that the Holy Spirit will minister to us this afternoon. We're going to read uh, this day, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And we'll read two verses in verses uh, 21 and 22. Bible says he now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God anointing comes from God anything that does not come from God is suspect genuine empowerment genuine anointing comes from God comes from the Holy Spirit so Paul is telling the Corinthians in this letter, you know, talking about discipline, how when he comes, he, he will definitely uh, correct them. He will not spare them. And then the document is authentic. So where there is an anointing, how you know it's from God, the Holy Spirit is in that vessel. Glory to God. And all of us as believers, we need to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit because he's the one who ensures that we are anointed. And then the other thing about this anointing in that verse 21 is that anointing establishes us. Go back to verse 21. The Bible says that he who establishes us with you, glory to God, anointing the presence of the Spirit. So to make it a little easier, let me give you about four definitions of the anointing. The first one is that anointing is the impartation of God's power and God's ability into our lives to do his work. Are we together? God imparts his power 
God impacts his ability in us so that we can do his work. God's work, I said yesterday, quoting William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army when it was a real army. God's power must be done with God's spirit. Glory to God. So it is God who chooses power to come upon us. May God select some unique power and anointing uh, because you understand the Holy Spirit when he comes. I told you that one of the evidence of anointing is manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit and there are nine. Glory to God. And some will manifest. Let me tell you, anybody filled with the Holy Spirit uh, has Jesus and has the Holy Spirit has the nine gifts of the Spirit. It's only that they are resident. They are lying there unactivated. You can activate the gifts of the Spirit. I know you have never been a healer, but you can begin healing. You can ask God to give you a certain gift. For many years that when we were preaching uh, in the mission field, Pastor Chichu, you remember, we are only preaching one message. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Just evangelistic message to win souls. If there is a story in the Gospels, it will be a story like the prodigal son. If you are lost, come back home. Come back to your father. Very easy. Zacchaeus, Haruruka, come down from the tree. It was direct, simple message. When 98, God began to shift our thinking in 99, and we came to local church ministry, you can't evangelize the church Sunday morning. Because the message you preached last week, they know it. You have to find a new message. So I asked the Lord to give me the gift of teaching. But whatever happened, there was a shift in my life. Amen. So, the anointing is an impartation of God's power, that ability that he places in us so that we can do his work. Now, look at Matthew 25 from verse 13. This is a parable. Going down, the Bible says, Matthew 25 and verse 13. Uh, <clears throat> go to 14. Next verse, just next verse. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. God has his own special goods. Now, one of the things God has is anointing. And he can deliver, give the anointing to you so that those goods, you can work with them. You can use those goods to serve him. Now, the next verse says, then he began to break down. He says, and to one he gave five talents. Just say five gifts. To another, two gifts. Because talent is something also, if you are another T, you really can run. It's not just because you practiced. It's something also from the Father. Are we together? So, talents... Of course, is given of God because God gives gifts and different abilities to different people according to his desire. Just like he gives spiritual talents which we call spiritual gifts. To another one he gave one. To each, listen to this statement, according to his own ability. So God looks at your ability, then he gives you certain goods. Immediately he went on his journey. You know the story when he came back, he wanted to know, what did you do with the five talents? What did you do with the two? What did you do with the one? In other words, whatever he has given us is for working with. We need an anointing so that we can do God's work. His work is holy and special. It needs his own empowerment. And it's the anointing. 
Lift your hand and say, Lord, give me my unique anointing 2024. The word here, own ability. That word, ability, is the word dunamis. So, these talents need to be outworked through the miraculous power. Because dunamis is miraculous power. So, the guy who had one talent, he did not use it. He failed to use miraculous power to make use of that talent and when God came he called him a wicked servant he couldn't even enter his rest are we together so we thank God for the empowerment impartation of the Holy Spirit of the power of God now I like that word impartation because that means it's transfer of power from a carrier to somebody who did not have Moses had such anointing it was transferred to 70 elders Jesus came and transferred to the 12. Now later, when he went to heaven, he commanded the disciples to also transfer to as many. Until 2,000 years later, we have an anointing of Jesus. The same anointing has been transferred from one generation to another generation. A few men died with it. They didn't do anything with it. Elisha died. He never transferred to anybody. Never imparted anybody. But there was somebody who was dying. I mean, who was dead uh, a soldier in the battles who was thrown to a cave kumbe it was the grave of elisha and so he touched the bones of elisha remember what happened i know you are not there but you remember you read in the bible then the man arose i believe when he rose up and ran alive i hope he went using the anointing that resurrection power you see romans 8 11 says that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Huh? Unaweza kufika hapo. Wewe unahitaji divine spirit. Wewe si mtoto wa pastor, wewe ni sijuni jirani. God bless you. Don't worry. We have a language in the house. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to this mortal body through his spirit who dwells in you can you imagine this anointing is the same that raised Jesus from the dead so I believe it's the same anointing that was on Elisha it had come from Elijah glory to God are you aware your pastor has an anointing anaze kuwa ni mufupi ya mamurefu lakini akona kitu usidharao huyo mutu that is just a vessel but there is something divine from heaven. Huh? If anybody is preaching over three years, he must have received something from God. Come on. And anybody who has a calling has an anointing. Would you reduce my... Uh, reduce the throws. Reduce the throws. Uh, if you know what that is. Now, number two definition of an anointing is the ability given to the believer by God to do whatever he has called him to do in other words Jesus will now be working through your, your humanity there is an ability that God gives us so that we can do whatever God has called us to do now if you are called as a, as a singer using your gift as a singer what we today call worshippers, then there is a specific anointing God gives you that as you are singing, people can be healed, people can be restored, people can receive the grace of God in an amazing way just by being present in that environment where you are. If you are a preacher, there's a specific anointing for that. There's an ability. Glory to God. If you are, what do you do? Munafanya nyin Nairobi. What has imagine was Krizaji? What there is also an anointing for business. If you are doing business, you are working among thorns and thistles and scorpions. That's Nairobi for you. You need an anointing to overcome scorpions and the serpents. Can you imagine if you are just a housewife, a mother in the house, just raising children? Let's say five children. 
you need an anointing to raise those children to be God's vessels wisdom patience love affirmation presence prayer and intercession so that those kids will not be like the previous generation every children should be more every generation should be more powerful than the previous generation did you hear what i say your children should be more powerful begin prophesying to them i know some of you don't have them but i hear children are usually between here and here in our language i hear that uh, children are there but wherever they are karosha tire when they come may you impart something to them in the mighty name of jesus so that ability to do his work and that's why uh jesus when he called his disciples uh let, let me show you we read this verse i think yesterday and yesterday about one luke 24 verse 49 that talks about the instruction he gave them uh he said behold i send the promise of the father uh but go tarry go tarry but tarry in the city of jerusalem until you are endured with the power from my go wait now he has already given them the commission in fact in verse 46 7 8 go back he has already given the commission as is written that's written they shall it was necessary for christ to suffer and to rise from the dead that day verse 47 and that repentance and remission of sins that is repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name where in all nations beginning at jerusalem and 40 uh, the next verse says and you peter james john matthew whatever philip all you disciples you are witnesses of these things so repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached is a great commission you should go to all the nations but he is saying before you go wait so those who went before waiting those who went before waiting okay let's go back to first kings 17 very far away many years ago from verse 1 and here's something about Elijah Elijah the Tishbite on the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand there shall not be dew or rain three years except at my word verse 2 then the word of the Lord came to him this is Elijah saying what go away from here and turn eastward and hide na kapewa address ya hide somebody say hide go to chapter 18 verse 1 the next chapter the bible says and it came to pass after many days that a lie the word of the lord came to elijah in the third year so the guy has been hiding for how long what did the word say to him go present yourself to ahab and i will send the rain on the earth so the first thing a minister must do is to enter into a season of hiding before you can show yourself So some of you are in the open. Can you repeat the process? Go hide. Hide in prayer. Hide in the word. Hide in the mountains, in the caves, in the prayer centers. Thank God Kenya has hiding places. Stay. Paul the apostle hid for 14 years. He hid for 14 years. Then after 14 years, Galatians chapter 2 verse 1. Read Galatians 2 verse 1. After 14 years after 14 years i went up again to jerusalem then he took barnabas and titus with him so you can't go to god's work without the anointing hiyo ndio point na jaribu kuwekelea hapo na lazima kila mtu ajue ulipata anointing siku gani lini tunajua siku ya kuokoka tunajua siku ya kubatizwa lazima uwe 
na encounters you remember when the anointing of the holy spirit came upon you and from that day forward you are turned into another man into another woman kwa hivyo ninyi wapenda general general believers hakuna time ya kuwa general anymore there must be a specific anointing in your life the day you will find it that's when even money will begin to come to you uh, that one Nairobi as you anaweza kufuata ukisikia tu kuna pesa bas wataamka glory to god huh? did you see some few kikuyus winning marathon wakisikia kuna pesa huko anaweza kunini anaweza anaweza kuwin marathon glory to god i'm just joking amen the third definition of anointing it is a grace anointing is a grace of the holy spirit given to specific to certain specific aspects of your life so the grace of the holy spirit given to certain aspects of your life and there are different kinds of anointings for different kinds of god's work praise god and i think that point is clear now fourthly anointing is when the holy spirit empowers clothes covers and transforms a person's soul and spirit with his character personality qualities values that one is loaded it is when the holy spirit empowers when anointing comes upon you you'll be empowered number two, clothed you'll be clothed you'll be covered then you'll be transformed your soul and your spirit will be transformed with the spirit's character spirit's personality the holy spirit's qualities and virtues so that you become a vessel that he can use praise the lord now let me look briefly at the anointing of jesus jesus was anointed jesus was anointed because he's our anointer today let's see one verse at least about his anointing and what this anointing was able to produce in his life amen now luke 4:18 the bible said that the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor so the anointing of jesus was an anointing of preaching number two, it was an anointing of healing the broken hearted people that are so hurt and wounded inside so it's not just physical healing but internal healing internal healing there's a meeting i was having a while ago and the holy spirit gave me a word of knowledge for somebody and the matter they were going through uh, was very deep could not be said publicly even on the altar because it would embarrass the person so i got the wisdom of the holy spirit and i called five people to come forward but i was interested only with one the four were escorting so when the five stood i got one of the ministers said niulizie hawa the case then to identify the person nikaweka mic away then i prayed and the miracle happened tell your neighbor foolishness is not your portion na ilifanyika pia jana i release a word of knowledge here then i told all the brothers lift up your hand wale walikuwa evening service all the brothers lift your hands and i i i gave a very little clue then i released the anointing and healing and then at night i received half a page of inbox message say man of god whatever you said i'm sure you are talking about me then he gave me a story so and, and lily he was very troubled inside his heart a physical problem that caused the heart trouble so jesus not only preaches the gospel the second thing he does is to heal the broken heart you know i was amazed by the priority jesus has placed on broken hearted people it's number two. he announces good news to everybody and the first people who should come to the altar are the ones who are broken hearted 
So let me say this in the lunch hour because we are not just preaching to you. We are also ministering to you. If you are broken, your heart, your heart is broken by wrong relationship, abandonment, disappointment, or you are bewitched, or whatever reason caused that caused heartache. As you are hearing my voice, I declare today is the day Jesus is going to heal you. You will shift your mind, you shift your thinking, you shift your emotions because miracles are not just on physical stuff. It's also broken heart in the name of Jesus. And then because you are in an apostolic house, we are not just healed when you introduce the apostolic anointing. We are healed to heal others. And that means when you are healed, no one can ever hurt you again. Your heart will become a heart that is surrounded by the Holy Spirit that even if they abuse you, you just smile. When they do you evil, you do them good because you are matured and raised up and anointed by God. Now you cannot be offended easily. Listen, those who are offended easily by Maziwa, Ime mwagika, mana chai, ime boil, ika mwagika, mana alikuwa metoka inje. Mbaka sama sama ini wife ya inagani. Wewe, you bad ujaiva. You need to reach a moment, you are never troubled by troubles. Spiritual maturity is measured by how we handle things relationally. But if you are the one who is only throwing tantrums, you are a baby in the spirit. You are still a child. But I pray the Holy Ghost will heal you because somebody hurt you. Somebody messed you. I'm reading a book right now. I was reading it yesterday. I mean, early in the morning. And this book is called, uh, uh, I think, The Real Man. You know, I'm also a man. Eh? So I'll stand to Kaya. And this guy is testifying how the father, his own father, never at any one time affirmed him. Never told him he loves him. Never told him that, hey, never gave him guidance. The father was always quiet. So this young man grew with a gap in his life. He lacked, you know, he was not confident. He was not self-confident because nobody fathered him. Nobody fathered him. I'm sure his relatives are here. The relatives are in the lunch hour. But Jesus, that, and one day he decided, I'm going to begin to read the Bible and deal with these personal problems. And his father committed suicide at the prime of his life and because of depression. And the man was also depressed. He decided, I cannot go the same way as my father. I have to change this narrative. And with, by the word of God, the man got healed. Now he's a global apostle, Karoza Daya. He became my friend and he gave me the book and he signed it himself. I've been keeping it without reading it. So when I smelt men conferences coming next week, I began to reload my app, Kanyando, ah, so that we can pray for men next week. Because there are some who have never had a father. Nobody affirmed you, confirmed you. That's why God the Father was fathering Jesus properly. When Jesus was being baptized or circumcised, I mean baptized, baptized, the Father spoke. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You husbands and fathers who are here, that's what you should be telling your children. You are my daughter. You are my son. And I'm well pleased with you. Speak something. Release life. Kayado. When you are at the mountain, Matthew 17, a voice came from heaven and Elijah showed up. Moses showed up. Father spoke saying, this is my son. And then he promoted him. He said, hear him. So that he could be self-confident. Glory to God. Later, Father told Jesus, Ask from me nations and I'll give them as an inheritance to you. Later, Jesus could now command his disciples. He would tell them, Go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, go and father the next generation. Teach them all that I've commanded you. That's fathering. Hey. 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 Okay, anointing of Jesus. Uh, yeah, kufanya kazi nyingi. Ndikuwa look for 18. Not only now to heal the broken hearted. I put this verse in NIV version. For the sake of a few young people. To proclaim goodness to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. Uh, NIV, what is it? Why, why the jump? He is here in NIV 84. In the newer version. And amplified version. So no, it may jump. I'm 
will not happen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Messiah, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Number two, he sent me to announce the release, that is pardon and forgiveness to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set a liberty to those who are oppressed, thrown and bruised, crushed by tragedy and accident. Okay, let's use us another verse as we identify the anointing of Jesus. All those including verse 19 to proclaim jubilee. To proclaim what? The favorable year of the Lord. The day, the day uh, when salvation and favor of God abound greatly. That day to announce. Somebody said to proclaim. The anointing of Jesus. But now, Acts 10 verse 38. In the, go back to the New King James. Acts 10 verse 38, the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power. You not only need the Holy Spirit, you also need the result of the Holy Spirit. Some of the things that come from the Holy Spirit, one of them is power. How many of you saw power demonstrated by ben Hin? Yes, power. Power. And we were there sensing, designing, smelling, whether it is of the Lord. You're not genuine. You're not genuine. And I'm going to show you some of anointing genuine because I was a Shetan and a fake king, but this one was genuine. One of the person that I found was heavy, he ended up with Mazishi. That people got saved in a Mazishi. Two days ago, I was one of the Meokoka. Then the Holy Spirit tells her, touch the eyes of this man. Touch the eyes. Lo and behold, the man was blind. He had a stick. The eyes opened. Boom. Two days ago. So, in the revival we were talking about is here. So now the blind are seeing Kwamazishi. Clap your hands, somebody, and celebrate God. So God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. By the way, every believer should have power. Find it. And let me tell you a, a secret. One of the ways you know whether you are power is when you meet the enemy. 1988, I went to preach in Bongoma. 1988. A little village just five, three or five kilometers from Bongoma town. Nalondo, Nalongo, somewhere there. I did a crusade. We were in a mission, so I was doing the crusade. So I preached. I can't remember what I preached. But I'm sure we we're preaching all those evangelistic verses. Either come to me or ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Or the prodigal son, or Zacchaeus come down, or whatever verses, or Jesus same yesterday to end forever. All right. So it reached the moment, and I asked people to be saved. The whole village lifted up their hand. I will never forget. I told them, You did not understand. Put down your hands. So I explained salvation again. I told them to lift their hands, and they lifted their hands. So I led them into a prayer of salvation. I know most of the people there get saved every day. But it was okay at least for that day for them to get saved until in a shift. Since I'm, I'm not against those people, they're my friends. Recently, uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago, we went to Bungoma to meet the fathers. And I was telling them I came to preach here, 1988. They were very amazed. So, we had learned from our fathers and leaders, Ukisha Ombeak Wokovu. We'll end at next level. What's the next level? You now pray for the sick. <laughs> and that included casting out devils. Whether they are coming out or not. So Mimi, I just did what I saw people doing what? Doing. So I said right now. <laughs> Kwanza, I even did a mistake. A mistake, but it was not a mistake. I usually, I used to see, even to keep, after they are saved, you tell them, 
na irisi na vitu mmejifunga za shaitani na viberiti na sigara tupa hapa kwa platform tupa maana sasa wako hapa wanaokoka wanaanza kutoa wanatupa hey, wakatoa tu vitu vingine ukiangalia unashindwa haya aka shetani kazi kwa ukiguza hako utakongwa na power hey. Hey. lakini kasema in the name of Jesus naambia tupa wanatupa wakatupa vitu nyingi nikasema lift your hands then i prayed in the name of Jesus i command devils out and people be healed People began falling like maize when there is rain. Na nikamtuka dogo. Sasa hii nimebarikiwa through my mother in law. That time I was a I was a tourist attraction. Kama umeshika using my wife's language. So I saw power. I was surprised. So what surprised me is you mean God uh, you mean you can use me. I did not know you can use me. So every believer should have power. But you can't know just seated in the lunch hour and seated in your church. Come out. Go somewhere. Threaten the devil. Let's see what will happen. Lift your voice. Enda kwa shule Sunday afternoon rari ama kwa service morning. Mwambie leo vijana wote mtaokoka. Number 2, people na depression zitatoka. 3, mtapona. That's what that's what we used to do and we still do it. I was in one KMTC then the Lord give me a word of knowledge kasa maana hapa kuna student anajulikana na shule muzima akurangi chakula yenu dining hall maana yako na shida ya ugonjwa yani menu yake inakuwa ka special menu nikasema huyo mu student kuanzia leo atakula na wale wengine kwa dining hall hakuna special meal ai msichana wenyewe akakuja mbele rafu shetani anasema sasa utajua maana sasa umewa promise na dinner inakuja mbea shetani shut up let me tell you that lady got healed kaanza kukula mayai you can't know whether you are power until you go and do something so hata tukitangaza Kenya revival imeingia na tuendelee normal uweze kuona this is the time now for you to activate what you have been hearing for many years are we together i pray that The Lord brings you to a place where you can pray for people. You hear oh hapa kuna mtu mgonjwa sana. Badala kutafuta pasta. Badala kutafuta nani? Why don't you say msijari niko hapa? Wewe si reverend, wewe si pasta, but you have been saved three years and above. Although in the 90s hata kama uliokoka jana ukijoin mission field utapewa mahali. Waende ukaseme ushuhuda wako peke yako. Surely how are we going to see the power of God so i'm talking about the anointing of jesus time is over now who went about doing good what does the anointing help you to do to do good wherever you go and healing all who are oppressed of the devil oppressed by the devil for god was with him when god is with you You have the anointing. Lift your hand and say I have the anointing. Anointing therefore should be understood together with the word dunamis which is a word for power, ability to obtain results. God's given supernatural power. Somebody say ability to obtain results. Amen. Stand up let's pray so that we can let you go you have the ability to obtain results all man of results stand up i'm going to pray karaza rabado shaya ability to obtain results all right lift your hand you have one sentence prayer as the lord lord i want to see your power and your glory i know you have saved me you baptized me in the spirit i have power The enemy has been telling me I don't have power but I want you to know God's people you have power. Go out and test that power. Go out win souls. Go out witness. Go out pray for the sick. Go out and do something. Go out and pray with power. Go out and live this life of Christ in the supernatural dimension. You have the anointing. Father, I pray for the believers that they will not be fearful. They will not be afraid. I pray my God 
this church and God's people in the lunch hour and all those watching online we will not be afraid I pray this generation shall do wonders those who have never seen the power of God this is the time this is the moment this is the season somebody say this is my season come on declare this is my season this is my season to see power it doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter how long you have been saved or not you have the scriptures you have Jesus in you you have the Holy Spirit go and demonstrate the power of God don't be afraid don't be fearful father I give you praise I give you glory I give you praise I give you glory I give you praise right now father I pray for these believers anybody that is in trouble anybody that is sick anybody that is in difficulties anybody that needs divine intervention anybody that needs prayer right now I pray by the reason of the anointing you did miracles yesterday you are doing miracles today even in this lunch hour right now I pray anybody that is sick receive you are healing right now kataya zato yabada i rebuke every sickness i rebuke every trouble in the difficulty that you're going through we rebuke it in the name of jesus i say may the anointing of the holy spirit rest upon you right now receive from god receive from god receive from god would you want to thank him would you want to thank him would you want to thank him bless you for coming to the lunch hour I know it's usually short but it's powerful it's empowering, it's equipping let's get our offering, we're gonna place it there, we're gonna place it there as you go be generous like you always do I pray for you, God will give you more money in Jesus name, two announcements quickly, we have Kesha this Friday you're welcome for Kesha, it's a city Kesha, then next week we have convocation, Tuesday, Wednesday Thursday, we are teaching about uncovering wealth you're welcome lunch on the evening and then we have men conference next friday saturday sunday friday evening saturday morning at eight up to one o'clock and sunday afternoon brothers you are welcome to the men conference i declare your offering is blessed i declare your hand is blessed i declare where your money is coming from is blessed i declare the hand of god upon you may the anointing help you to succeed even financially and as you give giving it with a good attitude May you receive it back in many ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Those who are online there, there is information that is showing up on the screen. Use it to give. The Lord bless you as you enjoy your afternoon. There is a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to 